Did you know that almost half of the people of the world live in this region of the Earth, known as the tropics? The tropics is home to many dangerous animals and natural disasters, from snakes and crocodiles to tsunamis and floods. What's the most dangerous thing you can think of? What if I told you that one of the most dangerous things is several thousand times smaller than your little toe? It's a germ called Burkholderia pseudomallei that causes the disease meliodosis. It can be found just about everywhere in this part of the world and likes to hide in the ground beneath our feet. But when there is lots of rain or flooding, the dirt gets washed away freeing the germ hiding beneath. When this happens, anyone walking through water or mud can get infected with the germ. The germ can get into your body through cuts in the skin, it can be swallowed, or you can breathe it in. Once the germ is inside your body, it can go anywhere and make you sick in many different ways. You can get a fever, cough, muscle aches, feel really tired, be short of breath, or even get a skin sore that doesn't heal. Most people just get a sudden fever, so you can feel hot, sweaty, or dizzy. If it gets into your lungs, you can be short of breath or have a bad cough. If it gets into your face, then it can make your face swollen. Other times, you don't feel very sick at all and may think you are just having a bad cold. The disease can affect anyone, from the young to the old. So, what makes you more likely to get meliodosis? Well, any long-term diseases like kidney disease, heart disease, lung disease, and diabetes. Did you know that about one in 10 adults in the world have diabetes? And the people that get meliodosis the most are those with diabetes. So, if you're diabetic, then you have to take care of your diabetes and continue taking your medicine every day which keeps you healthy and those special germ-fighting cells doing their job. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine to stop the meliodosis germs from getting into your body. Once it is in your body, there is also no quick test to say that you definitely have meliodosis. That's why it's very important that you go to the doctor early because meliodosis can be treated. Once you are treated for meliodosis, you have to keep taking the medicine against the germ for up to six months. If you do not keep this up, then the bad germ can stay inside your body and you can get very sick all over again. So remember, to stop you getting meliodosis, wear footwear when walking in the rain or through mud, wear gloves when working outside, wash cuts straight away, and diabetes makes it worse. So take care of your diabetes. If you think you have meliodosis, watch out for a sudden and high fever, cough, feeling short of breath, weakness, muscle aches, non-healing skin sore, and if it's the rainy season, and if you have diabetes, go to the doctor early, because it could be meliodosis. โรคเมลิออยโดซิสเป็นโรคที่พบได้ในเขตร้อนทั่วโลกนะครับตั้งแต่ทั้งภูมิภาคเอเชียตอนออกเฉียงใต้ออสเตรเลียตอนเหนืออินเดียแอฟริกาอเมริกากลางและอเมริกาใต้จากงานวิจัยล่าสุดเราพบว่าโรคเมลิออยโดซิสน่าจะฆ่าชีวิตคนทั้งโลกประมาณปีละกว่า 90,000 คนโรคเมลิออยเนี่ยเกิดจากเชื้อแบคทีเรียที่อาศัยอยู่ในดินและน้ำเชื้อตัวนี้เนี่ย
่แอบแฝงอยู่ในดินรอเวลาที่ฝนตกหรือมีน้ำท่วมแล้วก็มันก็จะขึ้นมาเหนือพื้นดินนะคะแล้วชาวไร่ชาวนาชาวสวนที่ทำงานอยู่เกี่ยวในการไถพลวนนะคะก็จะได้รับเชื้อเข้าไปในร่างกายผ่านทางบาดแผลนะคะหรือว่าอาจจะมีการสูดดมเอาฝุ่นละอองซึ่งมีเชื้อหรือแม้แต่การดื่มน้ำที่มีเชื้อเข้าไป As for knowing about it before, I was aware that there was something a s o r e born disease that wasn't very nice, but I had no idea what it was or how you caught it or anything. Now I'm just too aware of it. ก็เชื้อตัวนี้จริงๆมันก็เข้าสู่ร่างกายใครก็ได้นะคะที่เดินอยู่ในดินเดินย่ำดินที่ไม่ได้มีชุดป้องกันไม่ได้ใส่รองเท้าบูทนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นไม่ไม่ใช่แค่เกษตรกรที่จะได้รับเชื้อก็อาจจะเป็นประชาชนคนอื่นๆที่สัมผัสดินนะคะก็จะได้รับเชื้อเข้าไปนะคะแล้วก็เผ็ดก็คืออย่างที่บอกอะค่ะคนที่ได้รับเชื้อก็จะเป็นโรคนี้โรคนี้เนี่ยก็มีความรุนแรงนะคะค่อนข้างมากนะคะอาจจะทําให้ผู้ป่วยเสียชีวิตได้ The one I really think it came from was a lesion under my left foot because I was always working in the garden in in thongs feet getting wet potting mix getting spread over my feet breathing in potting mix fumes It's the uh, sickest that I can re ever recall of being. I thought it was just a, a touch of the flu coming on. It had that type of feel about it, where you just feel achy, breaky, uh, a little bit lethargic. Um, the uh, that uh, persisted. Uh, then I went to a stage where uh, it was uh, very achy, breaky, and I was I just did not want to do anything. Towards the uh, before I was admitted into hospital, uh, I didn't even want to eat. Started off just a general feeling of un being unwell, just feeling lousy, um, sort of a combination of the flu and a, and a bad hangover. From there on, it sort of you'd get that all right for a couple of days, and then you'd go down again, and uh, the intervals between got shorter and shorter, and the and the going down got deeper and deeper, and finally ended up with massive fever and and shakes and. Uh, Oh, I felt um, probably the worst that you've ever felt. You feel run down, tired. Initially, I thought um, I just had a, a sore on my knee. It just wasn't going away, and it was an open sore, and it was like that for about two and a half to three weeks, where it was just a bit, a little bit of pus and little blood coming out, and it just wasn't quite healing. Poor boy, he had low melanocytes. ส่วนใหญ่จะมาด้วยอาการติดเชื้อในกระแสะเลือดซึ่งจะมีอาการไข้สูงช็อกหรืออาจจะมาด้วยอาการปอดบวมปอดอักเสบซึ่งก็จะมีอาการไอหายใจหอบอาจจะมีหรือไม่มีเสมหะให้เห็นสองกลุ่มอาการนี้จะเป็นกลุ่มอาการหลักของผู้ป่วยโรคเมลิออยโดซิสแต่ก็อาจจะมีผู้ป่วยอื่นๆที่อาจจะมาด้วยฝีตามที่ต่างๆในร่างกายตั้งแต่หัวในสมองในคอในปอดในตับในไตในขาทุกแห่งในร่างกายพบได้หมดนะครับแต่อันนั้นก็จะเป็นส่วนน้อย And I understand that you know it probably affects people who have a weaker immune system or have got underlying issues of um, for example type 2 diabetes heart condition um, kidney problems lung disease so I, and knowing that I'm healthy In that side, I thought I was going to be okay. However, obviously, this this bacteria doesn't discriminate, so it'll it'll find its way, you know, wherever it can. And I mean, that's that's all I can really say because I've, at the moment, until you actually get it, I think you, your fears aren't really answered. Oh, fear. You don't really see the fear in it until you actually contract it. It's one of those things. Oh yes, it won't happen to me, and uh, I had no idea how you caught it or. Or what you could do to avoid it, or anything, and uh, I certainly know a lot more now. Well, just that if you if you do start feeling a bit off and tired, and and if you're a bit vulnerable, if you've got diabetes or 
you don't necessarily have to have that, I don't think. As long, you know, if you've got an immune system that's not feeling real good, which mine wasn't, it was sort of down a bit, and um, yeah, you're quite vulnerable on, on catching it. Like I said before, it, it doesn't discriminate whether you're, you know, you can be healthy um, to some degree as well as, and, and obviously sick, people with underlying issues. It can be airborne. That was my, perhaps, I think the biggest fear, knowing that um, people don't feel that you're immune to it. I thought, you know, being healthy and I didn't have any cuts anywhere, I somehow contracted it. And the thing was with me, I didn't even know that I had it. There was no, apart from a small the feeling of the lymph nodes, um, that was it. There was nothing else other than the sore knee. I just thought it was maybe a, a pimple or a boil that would have just gone away. Um, and if left untreated, possibly could have been very disastrous for me. So in the sense of um, when it comes to understanding what I know about myelidosis now is like anything, you treat it with respect because if you don't look after yourself when you're around and thinking about myelidosis, you're likely to contract it. So and don't ever think it's never going to happen to you because it can. Myelidosis, you know, you People don't expect they're going to get it or don't think they're going to get it. But um, it could hit anybody eh, at any time. I thought I was reasonably healthy and fit. But obviously I wasn't, you know, my, my immune system must have dropped down a bit. And then when I got uh, malleodosis and then it sort of went down off of me until I ended up in ICU. ปัจจัยเสี่ยงสําคัญอันดับ2คือโรคเบาหวานนะครับเพราะโรคเบาหวานจะทำให้คุณการร่างกายอ่อนแอลงแล้วก็ติดเชื้อเข้ามาได้แต่เราก็มีผู้ป่วยที่เป็นชาวนาหลายรายที่ไม่ได้มีโรคเบาหวานแต่เพราะทํานาวันละ8ชั่วโมงอยู่ในน้ําตลอดเวลาก็ติดเชื้อนี้มาเป็นจํานวนมากครับ Well around one in ten adults all over the world affected by type 2 diabetes and in this situation um, uh, people who have a diabetes are really prone to uh, myeloidosis uh, so that's the problem we have and that is because uh, what we find is uh, the early immune cells that uh, have to attack the bug is not very uh, functional in uh, diabetic patients and therefore they are unable to control the infection as they should. So therefore you find that these uh, patients who have type 2 diabetes are very prone to myeloidosis and uh, 40 to uh, 70 percent of the myeloidosis patients uh, around the world have also got type 2 diabetes. So the myelidosis infection can be quite difficult to diagnose, especially when people come in and they've got like a, a pneumonia or they just think they've got the flu and people will have a look. Sometimes it gets misdiagnosed as maybe having TB and tuberculosis or just having a chest infection. So unless you have experts here that might think about myelidosis and do the testing for it, but culturing of the bacteria can take up to seven days. So it's quite a long time from being tested to finding out if you've got myelidosis. I was diagnosed with myeloidosis probably two weeks after I went to hospital. Um, they couldn't find anything in the blood test because I, I think I, le I left it too long to go to hospital because I, you know, I think I'm real tough, you know, and I can deal with it. But in reality, I was getting temperatures and that for about three nights and really bad ones. So it's, um, it's very important that people with the risk factors for myelidosis or, or at a higher risk of getting myelidosis and a lot sicker, the diabetes, um, people on cancer therapy, immunosuppressive therapy and excessive alcohol use, uh, make sure they go see a doctor, especially if they're feeling unwell. ก็โรคเมลิออยนะคะก็มีวิธีป้องกันที่เรารณรงค์อยู่นะคะตอนนี้ใช้อยู่2อย่างนะคะก็คือให้คนไข้นะคะต้มน้ำก่อนที่จะดื่มอะคะ่ะแล้วก็อันที่สองเวลาที่จะไปทำกิจวัตรประจำวันที่เกี่ยวกับ
ต้องสัมผัสดินและน้ำอะคะ่ะเราก็จะแนะนำคนไข้ว่าต้องใส่รองเท้าบูทนะคะเพื่อป้องกันโรคมิลิออยที่มากับดินและน้ำนะคะ If you uh, can't help yourself and you definitely want to get out there, wear rubber gloves, rubber boots. I can only recommend to people that they do not, and I repeat, do not contract this disease. It's terrible. <laughs> Be very careful uh, in wet weather. If you're working in the garden, and especially in the garden in wet weather, it's a bad combination. Uh, wear good shoes on your feet, keep your feet dry. Uh, if you're handling soil or potting mix, if you can, wear gloves, wear a respirator. If, it's, if the potting mix is dusty at all, wear a respirator. Don't take chances because it's better to, be, to avoid it than to get it, that's for sure. The only thing I could say to people is, um, is if you feel off, don't, don't wait around to go and get checked out. Go and get a blood test and, and especially if you, you know, mow grass and and play around in the dirt and stuff, um, it's, a, it's a bad disease to get. Look, it's just taking care of your surroundings, be aware of your surroundings. I mean, if you're going to work in the garden, um, by all means, that, that's not going to stop you, but take consideration, like, obviously, if it's raining, avoid being in the rain. Maybe wait a day or two for the water to settle down, there's no puddles of water before you get out there and do anything. Um, if you've got cuts, avoid going out there at all. Wait till you heal yourself. Get someone else in to help you. Um, you know, it, it, being airborne as well. So, you know, if you've got underlying issues, you know, with type 2 diabetes or lung disease, avoid going out when it's raining. You know, to, you know even though you've got the, the cool breezes. You know, as nice as it might be, there's always that risk. Um, and if you're not sure, if you're not in de if anything you're not sure about, if you see any open wounds or if you're coughing or you've got fever, go get yourself checked out. You know, it doesn't hurt. You know, it's at the end of the day you're doing yourself a favour.